Hello everyone. So in episode one, we discussed an overview of anesthesia machines, right? And today we are going to study the first zone, which is the high pressure zone containing the cylinder system and the pressure reducing valve beyond which the system goes into the intermediate pressure zone. Let's begin. <music> So we're going to take an example of white colored oxygen e-cylinder and blue colored nitrous oxide e-cylinder. At full capacity, the oxygen cylinder is at 2000 PSIG pressures, which is very high. So that's why it's in the high pressure zone and with 660 liters of gas. But for nitrous oxide, the pressure zone is maximum 745 PSIG and the volume accommodation is around 1590 liquid and gas. This is important. Why I said liquid? because there's a temperature called critical temperature for every gas. Below this critical temperature, the gas can be liquefied under pressure. For nitrous oxide, the critical temperature is 36.5 degrees Celsius. So at room temperature, it can exist as liquid and vapor form. So if I draw a nitrous oxide cylinder at full capacity, it would have liquid and vapors. And that is why at the pressure gauge, the reading would stay 750 no matter how much vapor is being consumed because the liquid is being vaporized until there is no liquid left. Beyond that point, the reading on the pressure gauge starts decreasing. So after 75% of content is exhausted, the pressure reading of nitrous oxide reduces. So for 1590 liters, 75% means 400 liters. So every time the pressure gauge reading of nitrous oxide reduces below 750, it is automatically understandable that now there is no liquid left and the net content left behind in the nitrous oxide is only 400 liters. As for oxygen, the oxygen has the critical temperature of minus 119 degrees Celsius. Now at room temperature, of course, it cannot be liquefied no matter how much amount of pressure you place on it, right? So the oxygen exists in the cylinder in gaseous state. There is no liquid form. So it occupies a more linear relation between pressure and volume. So on a pressure gauge, at 2000 PSIG, it would carry 660 liters. At 1000 PSIG, it would carry 50% of the maximum, that is 330 liters. So you can establish a better relation between pressure and volume in terms of oxygen. Again, for better understanding of pressure volume relation between oxygen and nitrous oxide cylinders, if we draw a pressure volume curve, then oxygen at 2000 PSIG would be carrying 660 liters and as the cylinder gets consumed at 1000 PSIG it would be 330 liters so it's a more linear relation but for the blue colored nitrous oxide curve it would stay at 750 until only 400 liters of nitrous oxide is left this is the point where all the liquid has been evaporated beyond this point it would carry again a similar linear relation as oxygen because there will be only gas left in the nitrous oxide tank. Let's attach the cylinders now to the anesthesia machine. The first part that comes is the pin index safety system and the hanger yoke assembly. So let's go into the details. A hanger yoke assembly is essentially an assembly between anesthesia machine and the cylinder valve of a compatible cylinder, right? So you can see on a hanger yoke assembly, there is a washer which creates an airtight seal. There is a nipple that fits into the cylinder valve, creating a gas canal through which the gas enters into the machine. And there are two specific pins that enter into the cylinder valve. Now seeing it from the sides, you can see on the anesthesia machine part, there is a nipple and washer and two pins. And these fit into the holes that are aligned and compatible with the specific gas valve, right? So the pins fit into those holes as a nipple. Practically speaking, this is the hanger yoke assembly of anesthesia machine for nitrous oxide. You can see the white colored oxygen cylinder attached on the side as well. We have removed the blue colored nitrous cylinder. So in a yoke assembly, you can see the pin index safety system, the pins coming out from the machine, right? Which will fit into the cylinder valve. The washer, which creates an airtight seal, and the nipple. So, a question arises what is this pin index safety system? Well, if we see the hanger yoke assembly from the front side, so 
there is a washer, a nipper, and two pins are arranged from right to left in a specific order for a specific guess from 1 to 6, right? If we see it practically on a hanger yoke assembly, so the pins are indexed as 1 to 6. The trick is that every gas has a specific pin order. For nitrous oxide, it is 3, 5. So it will only fit into the compatible nitrous oxide cylinder valve, having two holes that are aligned and oriented in 3, 5 position. So let's say if we have an oxygen cylinder with a 2, 5 position, that oxygen cylinder valve will not fit into the nitrous oxide inlet. This is a safety system that has been devised so that you do not accidentally place nitrous oxide into the oxygen inlet. It's creating a hypoxic mixture, right? So you can see this nitrous oxide cylinder valve has the specific pins positioned such that they are only compatible with the nitrous oxide inlet, right? So once this cylinder is placed into the yoke, the pins fit perfectly into the cylinder inlet because these two are compatible with each other. So pin index safety system is essentially a safety feature on a high pressure zone. Once the oxygen cylinders are placed in the hanger yoke assembly, we can always turn them on through a key. Now you can see after rotation of oxygen cylinder, the pressure gauge on the front panel of anesthesia machine reads 1500 PSIG, whereas for nitrous oxide, it is reading 750 PSIG. Now usually the cylinders are kept closed and pipeline pressure is enough to carry out surgeries, right? However, in case of emergency, when you have to rapidly open the oxygen cylinders, it can cause explosion. This rapid opening of oxygen cylinder can cause constriction of the gas without exchange with the surroundings of heat and energies. This is called the adiabatic process. This happens when iron particles or debris or grease, say for example, undergoes combustion and they are heated at a very high temperatures. So a fire triad is completed and as a result of which explosion can occur. How to prevent it? Open the cylinders gradually. There should be no grease on the cylinder valves and do not use any expired cylinders or corroded lid. So once the cylinders are attached into the hanger yoke assembly, the next part in the anesthesia machine is vital part, which is the pressure reduction part. This is done through a pressure reducing valve, beyond which the pressures of the cylinders are reduced to around 45 PSIG, which comes safely into the intermediate zone. So let's study the pressure reducing valve. Now oxygen at 2000 PSIG enters into the pressure reducing valve and the output is 45 PSIG of oxygen. So the, at inlet it is very high pressure, at outlet it is 45 PSIG which is intermediate level. So this is the transit point between the two major zones, the high pressure zone and intermediate zone. So in a pressure reducing valve there is a high pressure chamber and there is a low pressure chamber, right? Now the basic principle that is operated here is the pressure is force divided by area, right? So in terms of area, in high pressure chamber, there is a small diaphragm. We can mark it as small a. Whereas in the low pressure system, there is a larger diaphragm. So the area increase would reduce the pressures. So the force part of this pressure equation is generated through this coil, which can be increased or decreased through a screw. This force is generated downwards on the diaphragm, whereas the pressure from the gas moves the diaphragm upwards, right? So when high pressure gas moves from high pressure chamber around the smaller diaphragm into the low pressure chamber. It moves the diaphragm upwards against the force adjusted by the screw on the coil. So when the red colored high pressure gas comes into the high pressure zone, it moves around the smaller diaphragm into the low pressure zone which is marked with green. It exerts pressure on the larger diaphragm against the force coming downwards from the coil, right? So when the pressure is very high, it would shift the diaphragm to a new position upwards. When the diaphragm moves up, it also moves the smaller diaphragm 
in the high pressure zone upwards as well and this would create further constriction around the smaller diaphragm through which the gas was entering into the low pressure system. This way the net output pressure is kept constant at 45 psig. This is the working principle of pressure reducing valves. So we have covered today the high pressure zone. Next episode would be about the low pressure zones. Stay tuned.